So there was a recent post that made it to, to national news, but before it did that, there were even some, some local, let, let's call them naysayers, uh, folks who traditionally, historically here in recent uh, past have not had, seems to be your best uh, interest in hand. They don't always give you the benefit no. of the doubt, right? So, um, No, they're not giving so me the benefit of the doubt because what does that do? Yeah. That, if you're talking about dismantling white supremacy, looking at racism squarely in the eye and challenging mm-hmm. it without blinking, that's mm-hmm. a problem for them. So those people yeah. who are challenged by me, it's because they don't want, even when they say they want to help be the change in the world, it's not authentic change and it's like liberating, mm-hmm. especially to Black people. So that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. So and so for a better or for worse that, you know, the statement that you made. Right. Like, let's get to the nitty gritty, the, the, yes. heart, the you know, the, the crux of it. Right. If we can if we can strip away the sensitivity that people have towards the language, the wording, yes. what was your purpose? What was your point? So, I mean, and I have it in front of me. So, mm-hmm. you, you know, the first First of all, putting Charlottesville in the first word, it's it's to put you on blast, not for no, a national, because we've already been put on blast at a national level and we haven't changed anything. I don't talk to um, anyone, you know, people nationally any more than I do locally, really. Um, we addressed that last night, turning down 99 or more percent of the requests that I get. Um, but it was intended for us. Right. And that mm. are seeing it and hoping that they can learn from it. That's that's OK, because that's mm. what wants to happen in the world, because we know that this world is unjust. But Charlottesville, the beautiful, ugly it is. I tell people all the time, you know, Reverend Grooms, Brenda Brown Grooms said the beautiful, ugly and described Charlottesville doing um, Dr. Holly Elwood's service. And mm. of all the emotions that I was going through that day, that is one thing that has stuck with me because I never mm. really knew how to describe it. <laughs> but mm. if you're from here, you understand this is a very beautiful place and you can understand right. why people are attracted you know, to it. But I used to say all the time without giving this description that, um, and she just put my thoughts into those two words um, mm. so well, People are living such devastated, depleted lives that they can't even see the beauty, right? Mm, and mm. so people walk around here, they come here, they want to, you know, come here and get married here on plantations and drink right. wine at vineyards that were our former plantations. And mm. during the pandemic, our economy is struggling because it's built not for local residents, but for wealthy white people, tourists. UVA students. And so a lot of Native people, they don't get to see the beautiful of Charlottesville. But Mm. since then, she put my thoughts that I've had my entire life into perspective with those two words. Like she defined something that I was unable to. Charlottesville, the beautiful, ugly it is. Because that Mm -hmm. is Charlottesville. Um, Mm -hmm. And most people who are in positions of power are um, able to sit and kind of bask in this beauty. Yes. And yes. the rest of mm. us are not. And yeah. then it rapes you, mm. right? And people have said everything about that it rapes you part. But what are we talking about? We are talking about it that a, com- uh, a community primarily made up of 70% white people where those white people in this community use their power in a very abusive way. So we have Black families who generationally since enslavement have not been able to come from under that oppressive knee that Mm -hmm. white Mm -hmm. child puts on its neck, right? Mm -hmm. And that is the challenge there. So Mm -hmm. rape in terms of pillaging, there's no comfort in that Mm -hmm. when you pillage a community, when you take everything from it. Um, And Mm -hmm. so that was a strong word choice. And for all the Mm -hmm. people that were triggered, that was not my intention. Um, Mm -hmm. Well, I have worked with women um, who have survived um, right. that trauma. And so yeah. I, that, that was never my intention. So my um, apologies, you know, for the people who yeah. felt that um, in that way. But 
for those who are able to move through that actual meaning and understand right. of what a community that rapes a significant number of its community member, what does that feel like, look yeah. like, and what are your long-term out possibilities and outcomes? So we yeah. have kids who can't dream because mm. since their family members were enslaved on this land, right. they have been in bondage. Yeah, you know, and I also think that the, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, I think that, that the verbiage is important though. You know, that's, that's, that's very powerful language, but you almost would have to be in denial um, not to be able to discern what's being said, you know? Um, yes. You know, and the truth hurts. And a big yeah. piece of it is like, we're scared of a mirror a lot of times, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's black or white. It's like when you're called, you know, to the carpet and when you are held accountable for truths, not conspiracies, not anything made up, like that, like that hurts. So I think, you know, personally, I think more so than your verbiage, I think the fact of what you shed light on is what really hurt the feelings. Yes, and then having people to look up, yeah, look a little bit deeper. And mm-hmm. then I had where well, people struggle with my word choice. My struggles were whether they were wrapped in cum stain sheets or comfort the income stain sheets. Mm. And I chose comfort <laughs> because there's no comfort mm. after someone mm. has taken everything away from you, you know, and then said, oh, and here in the bodily fluids I have left you with, find mm. the in that. And I wanted mm. to make sure that people understood yeah. that people in this community, there's no comfort for a lot of us. And people mm. are in a spoilage and calling it comfort. And, th- and mm-hmm. that goes back to that long-term conversation about crumbs. You're offering me your crumbs and telling me I should ha- be happy with it. You're in charge of the narratives and you're telling me that the narrative that you have about my life is the truth. That's not that. And we said in 2017, Black Charlottesville said, we know that 2017 wasn't the beginning of anything here. We right, right. lived in this community and we have barely survived in it um, since it was created. But white right. folks will say, oh my goodness, not, not, not here, not us. This is not who we are, mm. those are outsiders. No, they are two UVA graduates is who they were. They were not outsiders, right? And so True. that True. part is important. We keep attempting to remove ourselves. And so when the Orange Dot Report 4.0 came out, guess what it says? That 22% of our families are still living in poverty, right? Mm-hmm. That 55% of our families make between $15,000 and $35,000 a year. Mm-hmm. We live in community where the AMI, the median income for our community is $93,600. Our community members in the low income areas, they live off of $13,000, $14,000 a year. Yeah, yeah. And we have no interest in Charlottesville in breaking down the system that produces um, Mm. that inequality. Mm. So when you say um, no, yes. Yeah, so when you say no interest, right? Like so, yes. so we're dealing with the fragility here, right? <laughs> right. Like so, we're dealing with trying to get a point across, and you know, some people feel like that you, as a you know, quote unquote politician, yeah. you know, have to tread lightly because you can't step on too many toes to get things done. Is what some people. Well, think. that was the last so one. How do we, Okay. Yeah, it tells you to keep it secrets. I never told exactly, exactly. I was going to keep it secrets. Mm-hmm. Nobody did I ever say that to. How does yeah. that serve me? And how does that serve us? Yes. And if we are one, how does that serve the collective us? Yeah, so 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 in the face of that fragility, mm-hmm. like how do how would you suggest that we go about facing these issues? Or 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 is it a never ending battle? Um, like Like, do you think, Pulling, a, do you think changing the wording would have made your words set better in the ears of those who have that white fragility to where they can't face the truth on, you know, on their own history? Like, so what, is thing, that it, or how do we face it? Well, Charles, look, I asked somebody. 
I said, tell me the city mm. where there is a person, a mayor, a black mayor, who have tiptoed around you where these are still not the same conditions we're living in. We turn on the news every day and there is somebody who is still living under the same chain system that this country was founded on and that it has mm. very hard to keep us under. So how does me changing my words, mm. point? because there were people who did that before. Holly would have never written this poem. Mm. Mm. What did people do to her? West didn't mm. write the poem. What did people but, do to him, right? Mm. So there have been a lot of people. Um, Reverend Edwards didn't write the poem. Charles yeah. Barber didn't write the poem. Kendra Hamilton didn't write the poem. If we want to mm. talk about all of these people, but we are still in the same place having right. the same conversations where we find it acceptable that a few people possibly make it out. So I'm not interested in keeping your secrets. And I think when you're talking about white fragility, mm -hmm. I don't respond typically to press. And I wish I had responded to this Washington Post one because I didn't know what she was going to do. Right? <laughs> <laughs> But she put in graphic poem, Charlottesville mayor compares her city to a rapist and then puts a picture of the statue um, of Thomas Jefferson in front of the rotunda. Mm. Mm. What do you do with that? <laughs> you? What? I should have responded to you, Laura. <laughs> Just send her a gift card. <laughs> I think Laura reached out. I didn't even open it. You know, I think it was her. But that was Right. That right there tells everything. So mm. we have a community mm. that was created through the envision, the, the vision of someone who enslaved people. After they took the land from indigenous people, right? Mm -hmm. And they raped them too. So right. there, white America has a history of mm -hmm. and making people the other, right? Yeah. And they do it to low-income white people. Yeah. So it's so was, not just, they'll do it to everybody. They'll yeah. be a other as long as we allow them to continue to create it. Yeah. Um, so was there any reaction that surprised you at all? Or like any parts of the way that people re responded that, that was surprising? Or like you sort of expected it as you were typing? <laughs> well, no. So of all the things I say, and I think we talked about this last night on the Facebook Live. So I called West and said, this is becoming a big deal. He said, what, would you send me earlier? I'm like, yeah. And he said, all the things you say, this is a big deal, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So when I, I didn't think this was going to be the thing um, mm -hmm. that became the next thing that became viral, because that didn't make any sense, right? Um, but yeah. I'm not, um, I wouldn't, I would do it today. I think that's the question. I would still do this thing today. Mm -hmm. So I apologize. Some people are like, apologize. People have right. asked me on Facebook, um, hacked, was your Twitter? Because you never tweet mm -hmm. really was hacked. Um, and mm -hmm. I was so frustrated by what has happened over the past few months, mm -hmm. right? And, um, and that's what happened that day. Yeah, so you said what you meant. I was so frustrated over dealing with the city, dealing with the people, who have been elected. I have to fight with people about everything. We're mm -hmm. talking about changing the system, but I have to talk about maybe possibly some of our thousand employees are not on board with this change. And they may have mm -hmm. a problem with me, not because I've done anything, but because they have a problem with mm -hmm. the pace mm -hmm. of change, you know, um, or the change period, because maybe it doesn't serve them well either. No one asked those yeah. questions. Um, they asked me, what did you do? Mm. That's what my colleagues did, where I was like, well, I'm done then. Mm. Mm. I've never given anybody a reason to call me a liar, right? Mm -hmm. I have kept a lot of stuff to myself and I just deal with it because I'm strong enough to deal with it so I don't need to fight everything. But if yeah. I then, one, I trusted someone I shouldn't have trusted. Mm. And then after I trusted them and they shared something with my colleagues back, you know, December-ish, and it was not true. And I asked my mm -hmm. colleagues, so you may not agree with me, but when have I ever lied to you? 
So then I said, what? There's no reason for me to pretend that anything differently has happened here. If you all are going to continue to do what is white versus what is right, mm. and if we are going to keep having these discussions, and if you are now trying to bring me into this consensus building space, and I have to tell mm. you, the same people who voted for you didn't vote for me. Mm. So don't try to make me assimilate into your world because right. it's not going to happen. And then say I'm problematic and a bully and nobody mm. can get along with me because I refuse to do what I have maintained my help maintain my sanity my whole life mm. and remain as free as possible as a black woman can be in the United States of America. Mm. Did not have people elect me for me to give that away. That's right. 